My name is Lee Polite and I am a chromatographer. I've been teaching chromatography to professionals since 1984. I'm going to take the 30 years of chromatography knowledge and I'm going to distill it down to uh, a one hour lecture. And in one hour, I could teach you uh, what would have taken you three years or five years to learn uh, on your own. So now it's time to talk about the real details of resolution. Now, a lot of people are afraid to get into this level of detail because they're afraid it's going to be too exotic or, or too difficult to understand. But the reality is resolution is a very understandable concept. We have just to take it in, in small chunks. So remember what resolution is. Resolution means, can I separate two peaks? Can I separate one peak from the one next to it? It doesn't matter how many peaks are in the sample. Whether you have two peaks or 200 peaks, you still have to separate every peak from the one right next to it. So we call this separation resolution. In order to have resolution in gas chromatography, you need three things. Resolution is a function of capacity factor. We use the symbol little k or little k prime. It's a function of selectivity. We use the symbol alpha. And it's a function of efficiency. We use the symbol n for the number of theoretical plates. So what this equation tells us is, in order to get resolution, in order to separate any two peaks, you must have the correct capacity factor, you must have the correct selectivity, and you must have the correct efficiency. If you're missing any one of those, this will not work. GC won't work, peaks will come off right on top of one another. But here's the great news. If you set the correct capacity, selectivity, and efficiency, I guarantee a separation. There's no exceptions to this. It's always true. So hopefully I've piqued your interest now and you're thinking, my gosh, is it really that simple? Please tell me more about capacity, selectivity, efficiency. Is that what you're thinking? Well, well good, because I'm about to tell you more about capacity, selectivity, and efficiency. So let's start off with a set of rules. The first one is the rule for resolution. Resolution should be greater than or equal to 1.5. 1.5 defines baseline resolution. It means if I have two peaks and I just barely touch the baseline in between them, then I have a resolution of 1.5. If your resolution is greater than 1.5, then you have empty spacing between the peaks. That's not such a bad thing. In fact, that's a good thing. If you have a resolution of less than 1.5, then you have a valley. And we don't want that. We don't want a valley in between our peaks because we have not completed our task. Our job as separation scientists is to separate, is to resolve our peaks. So we want to have resolution of at least 1.5. So now the question is, how do I get there? How do I set these three terms correctly in order to achieve 1.5 resolution? So we just learned everything there is to know about resolution. I took you through the resolution equation. Remember we have the three terms we have the term for capacity factor, or retention factor. We have selectivity, alpha, and we have efficiency. Now let me show you a great tool that's available on the Chrome Media website. And it's a fun tool because it allows us to take that concept of resolution and really to play with the terms and see how each term affects that ultimate uh, goal of resolution. Remember, as separation scientists, the first and foremost uh, step in any chromatographic uh, system is to get resolution, is to get separation. So here's the resolution tool. Remember our goal here is to have at least 1.5. So a resolution of 2.0, uh, we see that the peaks are separated. We see that we can actually touch the baseline in between them. And I've achieved that separation by having selectivity of 1.2, capacity factor of 2, and efficiency of roughly 5,000. But let me show you that if you're missing any one of those terms, the separation does not work. So for instance, if I do not have the correct capacity factor. Capacity factor is essentially the amount of time that your analytes interact with the stationary phase. That's the only thing going on in chromatography. If you get no interaction with the stationary phase, we get no separation. So if my capacity factor is zero, in other words, if my column temperature is so hot that all the analytes spend 100% of their time in the gas phase, and they do not interact with the liquid phase at all, I get a terrible separation. In fact, 
I get no separation. Let's say I go out and I buy the world's best column. Let's say I buy a column with 100,000 theoretical plates. I still get no separation. The peaks are very skinny, but they're not interacting with the stationary phase. So I need to have some capacity factor. I need some interaction with the column. So even a capacity factor of one, which means the analyte spends as much time in the stationary phase as, the, as they do in the mobile phase, I can attain a separation if I have the correct parameters. So I need to have some capacity, some interaction with the column. Let's say I've got the world's greatest column, 100,000 theoretical plates, I've got a capacity factor of 5, I've got plenty of interaction with the column, but let's say that interaction is not the right interaction, so my selectivity is 1. Again, we'll see a very skinny peak, well retained, but no separation. This would be an example of, let's say I've got two peaks that have identical boiling points, and I try and separate them on a polydimethylsiloxane, on a DB1, HB1, RTX1, uh, ZB1 type of column, which means no matter how much interaction I get, the interaction is not good interaction. I don't have the ability to separate these two compounds. Let's say, for example, I'm trying to separate hexane from ethanol, and uh, for my instance, let's assume they have the same boiling point. Uh, I cannot separate them by the boiling point, no matter how hard I try. I need some sort of chemical interaction. I need selectivity. So how would you separate ethanol from hexane? Well, we ask the question, how are these two molecules different from one another? Once I understand that, I then can ask the question, what stationary phase would take advantage of that difference? So hexane and ethanol differ greatly by their polarity. So if I chose a polar stationary phase, like a wax column, I will see a much better separation. So essentially what I'm talking about here is to add some selectivity to the system, add some chemistry to get that separation. The beautiful thing about this tool is that you could play with each term and literally dial in what sort of selectivity, capacity, efficiency you need to do a separation. So if you were to tell me uh, my column is limited to uh, 5,000 or 5,500 theoretical plates. That would be a, uh, I want to use a very short length of column. I want to do some very fast gas chromatography. So uh, I only have a couple of meters of a, of a small diameter column, let's say a, a 100 micron or a 180 micron IV column. If I only had 5,000 plates, could I accomplish a separation? Well, I could if I had the correct selectivity. So let's say selectivity of at least 1.2, capacity factor of five, here, I get adequate resolution. So again, a great tool that you can use to help figure out what column dimensions you need or what parameters you need to change or affect in order to get uh, a good resolution. Uh, in this case, uh, if I wanted to know how little capacity factor was required and still maintain good resolution, this says capacity factor of 1 would still give me resolution 1.54. That's awfully close to 